Welcome back to uh, lesson two. Um, I'm sure you guys are super excited about this. I know you've been waiting patiently, eagerly to uh, hear more about the graphing trig function. So I don't want to keep you waiting anymore. Let's get to it. All right, so, so far, based on the stuff that I've seen you guys do from the lesson one, those of you that started it, it's looked really good. There's a couple like minor things that we're gonna go over today. Um, but like I said, for the most part, you guys got the idea down. So we're gonna start adding some more things, okay? Um, so what I wanna start with today is what happens when there is a phase shift. Good thing is you guys already know how to do this because it's just like a shifting left or right when we were doing like regular graphing. It's the same thing, okay? So let's get into this one. Um, our amplitude, remember, is that first one, three. Our K value is one. Uh, which means our two, which means our period is going to be two pi divided by one or two pi, and our increments are power two. Now, I know that's all the same. Like the period and the shift is always two pi and power two. That will change, and you'll see that in later on in this lesson. But for right now, it is what it is. Okay, so. Um, our phase shift, okay? We have inside the parentheses, we have something in there, right? So remember, inside parentheses is your left and right shift. So think about it for a second. Is it going left or right? It's the same thing that you always did. It's right, right? Because it's always the opposite of what in there. So we're going right, pi. Okay, and then we don't have a vertical shift because there's nothing on the outside like that, right? Okay, now, number one, this is one of the big things that is starting to, that we're starting to see. You guys have to label your axes. If you don't label, you're not gonna be right. Because if you don't label, I don't know that your coordinate points are in the right spot, okay? Because these values will change, and you'll see that later. But for now, they're not. But you have to label. If you don't label, you're gonna lose points, you're gonna get stuff wrong, okay? so. We're counting by pi over twos. So it's one pi over two, two pi over two, or one, three pi over two, four pi over two, or two pi. Okay, remember the negatives are just the negatives of those. It's negative one pi over two, negative two pi over two, negative three pi over two, negative four pi over two. All right, and we're gonna count by ones. You need to label your y-axis also, so I know how you count. Some of you guys chose to go by halves, or you chose, like you went a half, one, one and a half, two, because depending on what the amplitude is, you may want to change it, right? So be careful. Um, other thing about this, and I said it in one of the posts in the stream, but in case you didn't see it, yes, the graph paper you guys get on the thing, like the spaces are kind of tight spread them out a little bit. So like instead of going, they're kind of like that. Instead of going pi over two, pi, like spread it out, space it out, go every other if you want. Okay, there's enough room in there for you guys to do that. So do it, okay? All right, <clears throat> so we've got all this listed, we've got that label. Again, you need to do that. If you don't do it, it's completely wrong because I have no idea what your points are, what they look like if you don't label and you don't show me this, all right? So let's go through and label. Now, the first thing you are gonna do, normally you start here at zero, zero, right? Okay, but we can't start there because we have a shift of right pi. So you are gonna move to the right pi and this is your new starting point, okay? And then you're gonna do the same thing that we did before. Right, where you can make your chart if you want. Right, where this is like pi over two, pi, three pi over two. Oop, I forgot zero. Let's restart that. Okay. So you can make you make these charts every time if you want. You don't have to though, right? So 
But now, because we moved to the right, we're actually going to start at pi. Right? Actually, I can leave those in there if you want because we can go backwards. But we're going to start here at pi. Say hello to the dog. He wants to get involved, apparently. Okay? So, you're going to start here at pi. And this is where you're going to use your, remember, cosine. Where does cosine normally start? It goes 1, then 0, right? So you're going to use that same pattern, but you're starting here at pi. So it's 1, it's 3, times 1, plus 0, right? You're going to get 3. Okay, then you got 3 pi over 2, which is your 0. And then 2 pi, which is your negative. Okay, that's how you're going to work. So okay, now I, I stopped at 2 pi, so we have to kind of stop there. You don't want to go past that. But that's, we're still working it the same way that we did all the other ones. Okay, now to do the rest of it. Here's where the other part comes in that you guys kind of screwed up last time. Not all of you, some of you. You are not just reflecting this across the y-axis to figure out the negative, the negative side, okay? You are following the same pattern. So, as we move backward, right, we're starting here, right? You can even plug this in if you want, right? At pi over two, now you're going backwards. This is your one, then you're going to zero. Okay, this would be here at zero, would be like you were, because again, you're following the pattern of this. Right? At pi was your one. At pi over two is your zero. At zero is your negative one, right? So you're here. Uh, then you're gonna keep going, right? You're just hide your one, then your zero, then your one. Okay, and it's gonna look just like that. Okay, and that's all it takes. All right, um, now let's try another one. With, we're gonna add a little bit more to it though. Okay. Um, so again, don't, when you guys are graphing, don't just, when you have to go to the negative side, don't just reflect it over, okay? It's not gonna work. It's not what you want, all right? And when, make sure that you guys are doing all of this information here, okay? I'm gonna leave some of that because we know for this one it's still gonna be the same. Two sine theta plus pi over two minus one. Okay, so go through, do all your work, right? You've got an amplitude of two. You got a k value of one. You got a period of two pi, right? Because it's two pi over one, and that stays the same. Our phase shift now. Which way are we going? Left, because it's positive. And then we got this of negative one. Okay, I love the dog. Now, all this stuff changes, but you're gonna do that. Now, let's start to graph. First thing you're gonna do to graph is use your phase shift, right? So we're moving left pi over two. This is where we are going to start here at negative pi over two. Okay, this is our starting point. Okay, now, what are we gonna do here? Where do we start? Okay, for sine, remember, it's zero, then one, then zero, then negative one, then zero, right? So, <coughs> at pi over two, we have zero times two minus one. So zero times two minus one, is negative one, right? Then we go to our next spot, which would be a one times two minus one would be one. Okay, let's get rid of these. 
and then 0 times 2 minus 1. Negative 1 times 2 minus 1. And then 0 times 2 minus 1. Right? Just keep following the pattern. Okay? Now, we got to go backwards. And I'm going to make this for a second. Okay? A couple things. Look at this. Notice how you're going down, down, up, up, down. Does it make sense if you're following your pattern to go back up? Think about what you're doing. You're going down, down, up, up, down, up. Doesn't make any sense, right? It keeps the same pattern. So we're going down again, down here to negative three. Then we're coming back up to zero. And then we're coming up to one. Right? Down, down, up, up, down, down, up, up. Okay? So that's how you're going to work this with a phase shift. Whatever it is, you're going to do that first, and then you're going to do the exact same thing that you did for all the other ones. Okay? Um, next video, we're going to look at what happens when there's a K value. Okay? So that's going to be your next one to look at. All right?